So you're in the market for a new laptop and you're wondering what you should get because there's so many options out there. Today I want to try to focus on that question and specifically for photo and video editing. Coming up. What is up guys, my name is Keenan with Nailed It Media and today we're going to be looking at the best photo and video editing laptops. We're going to go over a few of the specs that you're going to be looking for as well as kind of crush some of the myths out there. Now, I get this question quite frequently. It comes across Facebook, comes across my YouTube channel, comes directly to me from people I talk to is what is the best video editing laptop, photo and video editing laptop. So, let's get into it. Alright, first of all, when we talk about a photo and a video editing, editing, edit, editing, editing laptop, video, especially if you're doing anything higher than 1080p for 2K, 4K, 8K footage, those computers are going to scale hugely. I mean, you're going to need a lot of a really nice computer to do 4K video editing. Now, 1080p, you can get away with most of the uh, recommend recommendations I'm going to show in this video. I'll link a couple of options down below for both photo and video, and then going into the higher specs for the 4K editing footage. First thing I want to crush is the battle between Apple and PC. Now, Apple laptops have made a great, great name for themselves as being very reliable and uh, you know a lot of people say they can't get viruses and all this stuff. Uh, I want to crush the myth that Mac is better than PC because they're simply not. Uh, it depends on the, on the uh, ecosystem that you're familiar with. So if you're familiar with iOS and Apple products, then go Apple. If you're familiar with Windows and, and uh, Android, which I am, I tend to stick with Windows. Apple and Windows PCs both use the same components. I mean, they're using Intel or AMD processors, in, uh, NVIDIA or AMD uh, graphics cards, uh, same types of RAM. And then, I mean, it's, they're literally the same machines. Apple just seems to have a higher price. So take that for what you will. The very first thing and most important thing in a laptop that I look for is the screen. Now, if I'm going to do photo editing on a laptop, I have to have a very color accurate monitor with good contrast levels that's going to give me an accurate representation of what a print or what someone else's eyes are going to see whenever they look at that photograph after I'm done editing. So it's very important to make sure that you get an IPS display. There's three types of panels on the market right now. There are IPS, VA, and TN. VA is really kind of an old technology in most laptops. I don't think I've seen one recently that has a VA panel. The TN panel is going to have a high refresh rate, so most gaming laptops uh, will have a TN panel. An IPS display is really kind of the best right now, and that is going to give you the most accurate colors. All right. The next thing in the, in the list going down from the screen would be the CPU. Now, CPU choice is imperative for video editing, not so much for photo editing. Now, a lot of people say if you're going to edit anything, you have to have an i7, and that's simply not true at all. CPU core count and speed is what really matters here. Now, for photo editing, you can get away with a Core i5 and be just fine. If you have no interest in uh, editing video, video at any point, uh, Core i5 is going to edit photos just fine. Uh, if you're going to move into the video editing space, I would strongly recommend looking for an i7. Now, not all i7s and not all i5s are created equally, so you're going to have to check the um, frequency of the chip that you're buying. So, the Core i7 that's in this computer is a really old Core i7. It's about three years old now, and uh, technology in the last three years has made leaps and bounds in both graphics cards as well as CPU uh, market. So, you want to look at the... Uh, base and boost clock speeds of your CPU. Uh, typically on a laptop you're going to find like between 1.8 to 1 point or 2.2 base and boost speeds all the way up to four or four and a half gigahertz. The next thing on the list that you want to look for is RAM speed. Now RAM is in crucially important especially for video editing and photo editing because that's where whenever you're in Lightroom, Adobe Lightroom or in Photoshop and you're moving sliders and you're moving things around to change exposure, um, change exposures or white balance, shadows, highlights, all that type of stuff, that is all going to be processed on your RAM and your CPU. So 
Uh, having at least 8 gigs is going to be imperative for any type of editing. I wouldn't recommend editing without at least 8. Now they do range all the way up to, I've seen laptops in a few thousand dollars that have 128 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of RAM. Those are well above what you need for a 1080p footage uh, and photo editing. Those are more in the uh, professional workspace for editing uh, 4K and higher footage. So I would recommend at least 8 gigs, 16 gigs if you can get away with it, if it's in your budget. But I wouldn't skimp on, uh, I wouldn't go blow my budget up just to get the 16 gigs if all you're doing is photo editing. So photos, 8 gigs of RAM will be just fine. The next thing that I want to talk about is your graphics card. Now you want to look for some sort of graphics card in your laptop. It doesn't really matter. Um, you can go with a gaming type laptop. They'll usually have a very high end GPU like a 1060 or better in a laptop. Uh, but again, those gaming laptops are probably going to have the cheaper TN panels. So something to look for uh, when you're doing a, when you're in the market for a laptop is to make sure that it has a graphics card of some sort. Now especially when you're doing video editing, especially in the Adobe space, they have the Mercury playback engine in the Adobe CC. And what that does is it allows you to render uh, render faster using your GPU and try to lift some of the heavy weight off of your CPU while, it's, while you're rendering or exporting footage or photos. Yes. So uh, you're really not going to notice a big difference if you're just doing photos uh, unless you're exporting a huge amount of photos like for example I did a client job where I exported 140 photos and that took some time uh, but this computer right here has a uh, full-size graphics card in it and I was able to edit those and get those out in less than five minutes which is great now on a laptop if you're going to be doing professional kind of content or professional uh, editing on your laptop you're going to make sure that you have a good screen make sure you have lots of ram or at least eight gigs but preferably 16 for professional space and some sort of graphics card so next on the list and very last of the components that i want you to look for that i think that you should look for when purchasing a laptop is your hard drive now there are three types of hard drives really there's an ssd a standard hard drive as well as a hybrid drive now a hybrid drive is kind of a combination of the, of the two uh, and to make things simple for this video, um, most laptops these days are going to ship with just a one terabyte uh, hard drive, especially under the thousand dollar range. However, some of the some of them are coming with two. They're coming with an M.2 drive, which is a solid state drive that's connected to the motherboard of the laptop, um, and those are going to do two things for you. They're going to be uh, much faster than a hard than a standard hard drive, but it'll cost you a lot of money for. Uh, for an equivalent hard drive. So the re what I mean by that is a, is a standard one terabyte um, 7200 RPM laptop drive is about $50, 55 bucks. And whenever you go into a one terabyte uh, SSD, you're looking at $350. So a huge price difference there. Um, it really falls down on your budget. Now something I want to me mention about hard drives is you won't notice any in application performance differences using it, a SSD or a hard drive. At least not a noticeable amount that you should concern yourself with. What you will notice though is load times. So uh, whenever you hit the power button on your laptop, how long it takes to get your, uh, your screen up. And then once your screen is up, how long it takes for the computer to actually start uh, you know, registering your inputs whenever you open Internet Explorer. As soon as you turn a laptop on, I'm sure everybody's, everybody's had this, you know, the thing pops up to your desktop and you hit the Internet Explorer and it takes like 45 seconds, which seems like forever, to load um, uh, your application that you're launching. Now, an SSD will be a lot faster. For example, this computer right here has one terabyte SSDs in it and it loads from pow completely power off to uh, loading a web page in about 10 seconds, which is great. This is an excellent computer here. Now this laptop over here, uh, it's got an old 5400 RPM drive in it and it's it's pretty slow. It takes a few minutes for it to start up and before it actually starts uh, reacting to the inputs that I have. So if you don't mind waiting, it's not a big deal. Uh, the only time that uh, uh, in application you'll have any sort of uh, difference between an SSD and a hard drive will be 
uh, your import and your export times because the read and the write speeds on SSDs are just much faster than standard hard drives. And the last thing on the laptop that I'm looking for, and, and this is really important for me, is to have an SSD, or not SSD, a uh, SD card slot on the computer. Now this one here has an SS, SD card slot here. Uh, it has USB 3.0, which is getting a little old now, but uh, it is the better of the USB ports. Um, and then you have USB 3.1 Type-C, which is much faster than even the 3.0 ports. So, uh, if you're looking for a laptop, for me at least, I want to make sure it has an SSD card slot, USB 3.1 Type-C, and USB 3.0. Those, those are the three things that I really want to look for. Now, the issue that I have with uh, Apple mostly is that they moved to the dongle life. Just like all the other uh, cell phones these days, you need a dongle to plug your headphones in, you need a dongle to plug your SD card reader in, because they're only... Uh, USB-C ports or lightning ports on the MacBooks these days and for me I don't want to have to carry around a dongle you know everywhere I go I want to just throw my computer in my bag and then you know I can transfer footage and back up my files from my SD card directly to my laptop and to a portable drive that I have so uh, to me it's really important to have the SS SD card slot um, and a USB 3.1 Alright guys, so that's been my tips for looking for a new laptop. Be sure to leave me a comment down below on what you think of this video as well as maybe what laptop you're currently editing on or one that you're per planning on purchasing and I'll check those comments and give you my recommendations. Uh, anyway, be sure to hit the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up if this video helped and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace!